Right, so today is the 1st of June, not only marking Child Protection Week, but also the beginning of Youth Month. We'll have a conversation about Youth Month a little bit later. But on the protection of children amid the myriad of challenges faced by young people, their mental health is often ignored. Half of all adult mental disorders uh, have their origins before the age of 14. Can you believe it? It's when they're most vulnerable, isn't it? Activists say more investment in childhood mental health uh, could save a generation. Is that really the case? Let's hear now from Laurie Lake from UCT's Children Institute joining us. Laurie, good morning. Appreciate uh, your time this morning. And it's staggering when you hear that uh, how important mental health is even before the age of 14, because this is teenage trauma being dragged into adulthood, isn't it? Well, what we know, in fact, is it starts even earlier than that. And so our earliest childhood experiences, even in the first 1,000 days of life, really set the, or can set the trajectory for lifelong um, mental health and development. And we know that many children in our country are facing really high levels of adversity. We're looking um, at 60% of children living below the poverty line. We're looking at almost one in two children who've experienced some form of violence, um, whether that's physical violence, sexual violence, um, and in some communities, almost all children have either witnessed or experienced violence, either in their homes, schools, or, or communities. Um, so given these really high levels of adversity, it's, it's really not surprising um, that more than one in 10 children in South Africa um, have developed a diagnosable and treatable mental disorder. And I suppose this is a multi-layered problem because uh, without a doubt, no child, no teenager develops these mental issues all by themselves. They are the victim of the society and the adults that live in society in our country. That's where the problem starts. So where do you try and begin to find uh, solutions in this? Do you deal with the children? Do you deal with the adults that are causing the children this harm? So the findings that we're sharing today come from last year's issue of the South African Child Gauge, which we launched just ahead of, of Youth Day last year. Um, and that issue of the gauge really focused attention on child and adolescent mental health. And it made a very clear argument that our mental health is shaped in very powerful ways by our environments. So those issues of poverty, of violence, of discrimination um, are, are a really toxic mix um, that impact on children's mental health and that of their families and, and, and caregivers. Um, and of course, we've seen pressures and stresses within the family increase due, due to the economic recession that we're facing. Mm. Um, at the same time, um, those one in 10 children with a diagnosable mental disorder need access to, to specialist care and support. Um, and what's of great concern and the reason why we have initiated this petition and this call to action um, is that 9 in 10 of those children are unable to access care. So this is about a resources um, issue, isn't it? If the resources were there, both, I would imagine, financial resources to put support structures in place, but you also need the human resources as well. It's just a shortage all round, isn't it? Yeah. So in, in the South African setting, we have 60 child and adolescent psychiatrists. But out of that 60... Um, only 15 of those are serving in the public sector. Um, and they remain concentrated. They, they, they're obviously specialists. They're concentrated um, in a handful of urban centres. Um, and that means the majority of children struggling um, with mental health problems are unable to access care and support. Um, so there's a problem around the financial and, and human resources mm. need, needed to give effect to the 2,000 and three child and adolescent mental health policy. Do, do you get a sense, um, so Laurie, that this national mental data. health policy uh, is going to be effective? Uh, is this going to be the, the answer to all these problems, this national mental health policy from government, or do you see issues there? Um, well, as I was saying, the, the initial child and adolescent mental health policy was issued in 2003, and it, it provided very clear guidance on what needs to be put in place to make services accessible to children close to home and um, to ensure that children and adolescents are not admitted 
um, to adult psychiatric wards, um, so really to create a child and, and, and adolescent and family friendly service. Um, 20 years later, we've seen very little progress, nothing has changed. We now have a new national mental health policy that promises to prioritize children and adolescents. Um, but at the same time, we know that budgets, the national budgets and provincial mm -hmm. budgets for health have been cut this year um, due to austerity measures. So the real question is, where are the resources going to come from um, to put legs underneath the policy and to realize this promise? to South Africa's children. Laurie, let me ask you very quickly uh, a brief answer, if you wouldn't mind, as I say goodbye to you. There's a myriad of problems. I realize that. I'm asking an impossible question. Uh, if authorities came to you, Laurie Lake, and said, OK, Laurie, we saw you talking to Gareth on the show this morning. Tell us the one thing we need to fix today, this week, this month. What do you tell them? <laughs> um, I think one of, one of the things we do know about mental health is that having access to um, income support um, helps to stabilize families. Um, it enables women to plan ahead, um, even when we're looking at the very small amount of the child support grant. Um, what we've seen um, over and over the years is that that amount is too small. If you're looking at 17 rand a day, what can you buy mm. for a child? How can you support their optimal development? Um, so I think money goes a long way to to building a, a strong safety net for children. Um, so that applies at a household level and equally so to child and adolescent mental health services. So I would like to encourage anyone who really cares about child and adolescent mental health to sign on to our petition. Um, it's available on um, a way to amanda.mobi um, and we're hoping to deliver that petition to the Minister of Health on Newsday. Well, there it is. There's the problem. There's the call to action. Hopefully there's the plan as well. Laurie, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you uh, for making time for us this morning. Laurie Lake from the Children's Institute at the University of Cape Town.